What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal and today we're going to go over why you need to use TypeScript when programming in React. Now it is well known that TypeScript does add a little bit of overhead and you're going to need to set it up and get used to programming in TypeScript, but there's a lot of gains that come along with it. And today I want to go over one specific example where it helped me save a lot of time and issues that I definitely would have had if I was just programming with JavaScript. So let's get into it. So just to set the scene of what's going on here, I wanted to really cement my knowledge of React and TypeScript, and I figured the best way to do that is to create and release a simple Kanban board productivity app. So I'm sure you guys have heard of something like Trello. You can move tasks around, you can create tasks, you can move them from column to column, things like that. And that's basically what I got going on over here. Just as a quick little overview, right? I created this initial data point called initial data board. And inside of here, right? I just initialized some tasks and some columns. So each column is tracking the tasks that are related to that column. And all I'm doing inside of the uh, TSX files is I'm displaying that, iterating over them, iterating over the columns, right? inside of the board and inside of the columns, I'm iterating over the tasks, right? Right over here, there's a couple task IDs and I'm displaying the tasks. There's just three components, board, column, and task. All I'm really doing is just displaying the data on screen. So I want to go over this example of where I was going to refactor the way the data is stored. And as I was refactoring the code, I noticed that TypeScript came in really clutch and helped prevent a ton of errors that I would have had if I was working with JavaScript. So let's get into it and see what that uh, refactoring was. So let's take a look at what I was going to refactor. So inside of board and inside of column, right, I set up my project so that it uses the interfaces properly. So I've got some tasks and each task has the task ID and content. I've got uh, a column and I defined that a column is going to have these key properties. How I wanted to refactor this was I wanted to say, hey, I don't want it to be column ID because we're already specifying that this is a column. I just want this to be ID. So as soon as I sort of uh, remove this and change it to ID, you're going to notice that the app is already detecting a ton of errors inside of my code. It detected two errors inside of this file, two errors inside of board.tsx, and one error inside of column.tsx. So I can immediately know that I basically need to change this code five separate times. If I scroll down, right, like looking here, I see the red mark, so I scroll down. There we go. I use, uh, uh, I use column ID here, I use column ID here. So again, I, as soon as I change that, error is gone. I go here and look at that. I use column ID here and it's telling me the error, right? Column ID does not exist. So I'm gonna change this to ID. And again, same thing here. Column ID does not exist, change that to ID, error goes away. And I come over here, change this to column, to uh, change this to ID, error goes away. So that's sort of the power of TypeScript, right? Like. Notice how it's immediately detecting inside of the entire app any issues that I may have by changing, just changing this interface, right? I set up my app, obviously. It did take a little bit of time because I had to go through and I had to specify uh, certain features of each thing, right? Like I'm saying, hey, this column is gonna be of uh, the column interface. This, again, is gonna have the props of column interface. So there is a little bit of an initial upfront cost where you're sort of specify these things, but this is going to save you a huge amount of time down the road. So at the end of the day, it just comes down to how, you know, how willing you are to adopt TypeScript into your app, right? Now, obviously, um, there are things that can uh, be annoying at times, right? There's an easy way to just fix TypeScript errors, and that's just pass in any to every single thing that, you know, might throw an error. Notice here that I'm displaying the task, right? It's throwing me this error because I specified that, you know, the task is going to have to have this type of prop, but I can just say any and, you know, that'll fix the error for me. Doing that is going to cost you a lot of time in the, in the future. So ideally what you want to do is you want to be as specific as possible when you are creating your TypeScript project so that if you do change anything, right, if you do change the task information, then it's going to throw the error for you automatically. And that's what you really want. TypeScript is going to 
basically help you as much as you incorporate it into your project. You can just keep it, keep, run it like JavaScript and just not really specify anything. Um, but you know, that's going to come bite you later, right? It's a very simple thing to just say, Hey, I'm going to just going to change, you know, this ID to column ID. And it's very easy to forget, you know, every instance inside of your project where you have to change it. So TypeScript is just going to be proactive and it's going to tell you, hey, you change it here, you might want to change it here. It's a very small upfront cost, but this cost is going to save you a lot of time in the long run when you're refactoring, whenever you have to make any code changes, you're going to feel way more confident when you do. So yeah, I mean, that's sort of the main benefit of TypeScript is it really helps you when you are changing things around refactoring code. And it's something that we tend to do a lot, right? We tend to change the way variables are named. Um, and we also tend to forget uh, exactly where we call those variables. So we get a lot of mistakes or a lot of undefined errors in JavaScript. But you know, TypeScript is really helpful in preventing those types of errors. So I definitely suggest that you guys, you know, start working with React and TypeScript. And if, if you want to learn more about React and TypeScript, I'm going to be making more videos just like this. So feel free to subscribe and like the video, because um, that's going to really help me out. And it's going to keep you notified um, when I upload more videos. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time.